Hey, let's look at uh, section 4.6. This is dealing with trapezoids. So a trapezoidal rule is simply approximating the area of region using areas of trapezoids. Um, let's see this in a little bit visually, but this is actually going to give us, using trapezoids, um, we can approximate uh, the area of a region better than inscribed, circumscribed, or midpoint rectangle. Um, okay, so to review, uh, the area formula for trapezoid is one-half height times um, b sub 1 plus b sub 2, okay? or one-half of b sub 1 plus b sub 2 over h. So either way you want to write it. Now this is usually what we, the, uh, uh, the orientation uh, for our trapezoids when we usually see it. We usually see uh, um, upper and lower base uh, with the height uh, being the vertical portion. Right, um, but for our purposes, um, since um, the trapezoids that we're going to be drawing are going to be more um, of a trapezoid that is on its side, okay. So if we flip this, um, if we take this and flip it on its side, okay, we have a maybe a trapezoid that looks more like this that we're going to be dealing with. Okay, so we can adjust the formula a little bit. Um, instead of b sub 1 and b sub 2, we can think of this as h sub 1 and h sub 2, and then the h just becomes the, the base. It's still the same formula, but visually, uh, maybe easier to think of the vertical portions as um, h sub 1 and h sub 2. So the same formula, we're just adjusting it um, uh, visually, so uh, it'll be easier to, uh, to uh, memorize for visual purposes. So our area, uh, we can think of it as um, base over 2, or width over 2, either one, times h sub 1 plus h sub 2. And we can think of the base as the width. So example 1, uh, estimate the area bounded by our function 6x minus x squared, the x-axis. Uh, and um, the bounds are not given to us because um, if we were to look at the graph, the graph is going to automatically just cut itself off when it crosses the x-axis on either side. Okay. Now, if we, look, if we look at these as trapezoids, you see that uh, the, the trapezoid that we draw for these rectangles, for, uh, uh, for these intervals, we're going to get a much better approximation because visually you can see that the, um, the amount of gap that we're going to have for trapezoids is going to be a lot less than for any rectangles that we draw. So the first step, uh, for example, one is we need to find the bounds, okay, since the bounds are not given to us. So we can find out when the graph is going to cross the x-axis by setting our function equal to 0. Factor out the x, we get 6 minus x. So set x equal to 0, we get 0. Set 6 minus x equal 0, we get 6. So we have our bounds being 0 and 6. So now our width is simply going to be um, determined by the a and b values as well as our n. Our n value is 6. We want 6 intervals or 6 trapezoids. So our width is b minus a over n, 6 minus 0 over 6, 6 over 6 is 1. So starting at 0, we're going to increment by 1 until we get to 6. So our width is simply going to be um, by intervals of 1. So now we're simply just going to find the area of each of our trapezoids. So for my first trapezoid, this is really a triangle, but we can still use a trapezoid formula. Um, it's base over 2, or width over 2, my width is 1, so 1 over 2 times f of 0 plus f of 1. Uh, the height for uh, my first trapezoid is going to be f of 0, and the height of my second trapezoid, uh, for, sorry, the um, h sub 2. For my um, uh, for my first interval is going to be f of one, okay. and that's simply going to be um, f of zero is simply going to be zero, and f of one is simply going to be five. I'm simply plugging all this into our function six x minus x squared. Okay, and the area for my second trapezoid is um, width over two or base over two times f of one plus f of two. All right, these represents, represent the height of my second trapezoid. Okay. The third trapezoid, f of 2 plus f of 3. Fourth trapezoid, f of 3 plus f of 4. 
fifth trapezoid, f of 4, f of 5, and finally f of 5 and f of 6. Okay. Now we can find all these values by plugging into our um, function. So f of 0, f of 1, all the way to f of 6. I worked out all the, um, the values here, and we have the heights at each of those um, intervals. So if we plug all those values in, we're going to get the area of each um, trapezoid, or uh, in the instance of the endpoints, is actually going to be triangles. So we add all these up, and our area, our approximation, will be 70 over 2 or 35. Okay. There's actually a shorthand way of writing this. Um, because the widths are all the same in this instance, look at the pattern. The pattern is if we add up all these areas, what portions get repeated? Okay. Every interval from 1 to 5 gets repeated because, see that, area 1, area 2, they both share f of 1. Uh, all, the, uh, all these intervals, all these regions, share um, one common height. So what we can do is we can write this formula as um, by doubling each of the heights. So 2 times f of 1, 2 times f of 2, 2 times f of 3, all the way to f of 5. The only, um, uh, the only heights that do not get shared are the endpoints. So f of 0 and f of 6 are only going to be used by one trapezoid, but every other height is going to be shared between two trapezoids, so we can simply double, it, double that cell. Now we can only do this if we have heights or if we have widths of the same um, value, okay, equal width. We're going to see some problems later where we're not going to get um, equal width, and if, if that's the case, then we have to split them up and um, find the area of each individually. We can't break it up. Uh, we can't uh, um, combine it together into just one nice formula. Okay. So if we were to work this out um, using uh, the shortcut method, um, because my width is going to be 1 over 2 is the same uh, for each trapezoid, 1 over 2, and then plug all those, these values in, I'm going to get the same value, 35. Okay. In your homework, you're going to see integral notation, um, and uh, it's um, a problem that looks like this, where it says the integral of 6x minus x squared between 0 and 6. This is saying the same thing as um, estimating the area for our function between the intervals from 0 to 6. So um, the function that we're dealing with is 6x minus, six minus x squared, and that's going to be placed here next to the uh, integral sign. And then the lower value that you see is, is the lower bound. That's the a value. And then the 6 here is, is where the upper bound is, or the b value. 